Hello, everyone. Welcome to Medicare 101. Um, I'm used to doing these with a live audience, and today I'm in the meeting room here at Town and Country and uh, Credit Union, and we are totally empty, so bear with me. And uh, we're going to be covering just the basics of Medicare today. I call it Medicare 101. There's just a lot of unique situations that can be relevant for individuals. But in this case, we're going to only talk about uh, the basics of Medicare. Try not to get too far into the details. So here we go. We're going to talk about what is required to be eligible for Medicare, uh, the four parts of Medicare, and what Medicare does not cover, which is a very important thing to understand and know. We'll compare different types of plans and plans that you can get in our area versus some that are available in other parts of the country. And uh, then the enrollment rules, dates, the facts about enrollment. <clears throat> the publication that you may have seen at one time or another, this one, Medicare and You, that is the official handbook for Medicare. And uh, you can get one by paper if you request it, but they prefer you download a digital copy. And uh, there's a lot of details in that. Uh, it's difficult sometimes to find what's relevant for you. And hopefully I can cover just the basics for you today. In this presentation, I will not be talking about any particular insurance company or a policy. This is strictly for education on the basics of Medicare. Medicare started back in 1965 under President Johnson. It offered seniors age 65 and older guaranteed health coverage, which was a real benefit to the seniors at that time. And of course, the program has grown exponentially, where currently there are 62 million people covered by Medicare in the United States. And the baby boomers are aging into Medicare at a tremendous rate, around 10,000 per day, which means that's 3,650,000 per year. At that rate, um, we'll soon be over 100 million. Medicare has four parts, <clears throat> and you'll notice that uh, the first two parts, A and B, are referred to as original Medicare. They've changed some since 1965, but Medicare Part A and B are, as you see on the screen, Part A, I always say, is admitted. Let the A remind you that you have to be admitted to a hospital or a care facility of some kind as an inpatient for Medicare Part A to be covering you. Everything outside the hospital, outpatient, is covered under Medicare Part B, referred to as medical coverage. And then in recent years, um, they've added Part C and Part D. And Part C and D are really offered by private insurance companies that are paid by Medicare, and then they assume the risk and the administration and the cost of covering people's um, healthcare and prescription drug needs. So I wanna look just a little bit at the basic original Medicare for you. <clears throat> Part A, most people do not pay a premium for that because they've paid into the Medicare system through their paycheck, uh, through their taxes, all through their working life. If uh, you've not worked enough to qualify for Part A uh, with no premium, you could be charged a premium, but that's pretty rare. Medicare Part A, as we said earlier, covers hospitalization. And there is a deductible for Medicare Part A. In 2021, the deductible is $1,484. So that's what you would owe if all you had was the red, white, and blue Medicare card and you were admitted to the hospital. So that's a big deal. And people sometimes want to know, well, how can I get help paying for that? And that number goes up each year. The deductible in 2020 for a hospitalization was $1,408. And those numbers are set year by year. If you go down to Part B, Medicare Part B, there is a premium. And most people do pay that unless you qualify for extra help. You could sometimes, if you are on Medicaid, get help paying for your Part B premium. The premium for most people this year is $148.50 per month. And that premium, if you're taking Social Security, is taken directly out of your check. If you've postponed Social Security but are taking Medicare, they bill you quarterly. 
So it'd be that amount times three. And again, that amount is adjusted upwards each year, usually announced around the first of the year. And then the premium is also adjusted if you are higher income than the average. Uh, it's the Medicare income re, uh, readjustment. So you could pay more than that. And there's a whole chart that we won't get into today to determine how much that is. Medicare Part B, in other words, the outpatient care has a deductible also, and that is currently $203 per year. Let me point out something different on deductibles between A and B. Part A is deductible for hospitalization is per benefit period. In other words, per hospitalization, unless you're readmitted within 60 days, you would pay that deductible again, and you could pay that deductible multiple times in one year. So that's something many people don't know and find out um, the hard way. <clears throat> Medicare, as it says on the slide, is a federal program for people over 65. But in 72, it was expanded to include permanently disabled people. And once you've been receiving a social security disability check for 24 months, you then are eligible for Medicare. Now we move on to part C and part D. And as it says, it's covered by private insurers. These private insurers are assigned the responsibility to pay for part A and part B benefits. They are paid by Medicare, and then they are responsible for a person's expenses. A lot of Medicare Advantage plans include part D. Most of them do actually, but some do not. If you're a military veteran and qualified for VA benefits, then an Advantage plan without the Part D benefit might be a good choice for you. Then there's Medicare Part D as in drugs. Um, Part D prescription drug coverage is optional, but if you don't purchase a Part D and later on you decide you do want help buying your prescription medications, they'll tack on a penalty to whatever policy premium you choose. The reason Part D has been added in recent years and was not included in original Medicare is because they could not foresee how important prescription medications would become in maintaining people's health and reducing uh, medical costs to, the, to Medicare. So they've included that and added it uh, back under George Bush Jr.'s administration, actually. Each prescription drug plan is different. And in our area, there are 28 plans and um, we'll talk more about how to select those plans in a later slide. If your income is limited, you may qualify for extra help. And again, Medicare Part D is regulated by, by Medicare, but it's through a private insurance company. <clears throat> Let's talk about some of the things that original Medicare does not cover. Medicare only pays approximately 80% of all the Medicare approved services, and that's important. You notice the italics, Medicare approved. Uh, you have to be sure that Medicare covers the procedure that you're having done. And it's important to check that if it's a major thing before you do. Original Medicare didn't cover dental care, contacts or eyeglasses, hearing aids, or over-the-counter type benefits. It did not include prescription drug coverage. And most health care outside the US is not covered by Medicare. And it has a limit on how much hospital and skilled nursing benefits you could receive. If you exhaust Medicare's um, skilled nursing care or nursing home coverage, then you either pay the bill out of your own pocket until you've spent down and qualify for Medicaid, or you perhaps, if you have an estate to protect and choose to, you can purchase a long-term care policy. Probably the most important point on this slide is what is written in red. With original Medicare, there is no limit on how much you could pay out of your own pocket. Even though Medicare pays 80% of the bill, in a difficult year, of course, 20% could be a huge number. How do you qualify for Medicare? Well, you turn 65 and you then get a seven month window. The three months prior to the month when you turn 65, the month of your 65th birthday, and then the three months following that 
are your seven month window to enroll. And most people get that done prior to the first day of the month in which they turn 65. That's preferable, otherwise you'll have a gap in coverage unless you continue employer coverage. <clears throat> the other enrollment period to be aware of, and this is the one that most people focus on once they're in Medicare, is the annual election period. At this point in time, you can change plans as, as much as you want, and you could choose between cost plans, Medicare Advantage Part C plans, or Medicare prescription drug plans. It's a very busy time of year, and it's important to start early if you want to get the help you need. Then there's the open enrollment period for Medicare Advantage. This is not used very much as long as someone uh, gets it done correctly during the annual enrollment period, but you are allowed to make a one-time change even after uh, December 7th if you are in a plan that you have later changed your mind and decided you don't want. There are special election periods that people can qualify for. There are several of them, but I've listed only the three main ones. The one that happens quite frequently in our area is people who retire after age 65 and are losing their employer coverage. If you're in that situation or soon will be, it's important to handle that very well. And a lot of the trouble people have getting set up properly is in this area. A lot of people postpone Medicare and Social Security, and those two decisions are separate issues. But if you're going to start Medicare, uh, you need two forms, and you can get them from the Social Security Administration website. One is your Part B application, where you specify when you want your Part B coverage to start, saying when your employer coverage will end and when Medicare needs to kick in. And then also you will want to request the employer information page, <clears throat> because with that, your employer can um, document that you've had coverage and don't owe a penalty for enrolling into Medicare after age 65. You'll notice the asterisk there where I say call the local Social Security office. You're much better off dealing with a local office. Uh, you won't uh, need to wait quite so long for responses and you just get more personal help locally. Another special enrollment period is if you move to a different part of the country and um, sometimes even from one county to another the plans that are available are different and you are required to change to plans that are available in your area. And the third one on the screen is someone qualifying for extra help. If you have a, a reduction in income, uh, you may qualify for extra help choosing a Part D plan. And in that case, uh, you have a special enrollment period. <clears throat> Let's talk about some of the late enrollment penalties. Uh, there are a lot of questions about this. Uh, part B, someone who continues to work past age 65 and has employer coverage, you do not need to enroll in Part B as long as you have what is called, important word, creditable health insurance coverage through your employer. In other words, it's at least as good as Medicare coverage and you will not owe a penalty for not enrolling in Part B. If you have creditable coverage, there's no sense purchasing Part B at 148.50 or more per month because you won't be using it anyway. You postpone that and start Part B when you lose employer coverage. As I said earlier, when to enroll in Medicare and Social Security, those are separate issues and personal decisions. And it's very important to know how to navigate those to do what's right for your particular situation. There's a Part D late enrollment penalty as well that I mentioned earlier, and that is calculated at 1% time the base premium. In other words, the average Part D premium throughout the country, they multiply it by 1% and they tack it on to whatever plan you choose and the premium that plan has. So that changes each year because the average Part D premium goes up each year, so your penalty won't be the same forever, but it will stick with you as long as you continue to have and need Part D coverage. You will not get a Part D late enrollment penalty if, again, you have coverage through an employer. And if you qualify for extra help, they would remove the penalty from you. 
Some people do not take any prescription medications at all, and they say, why do I need to buy this policy? It's a good question. There's two reasons, perhaps, to buy it. You never know when your health may change, and you'll be prescribed an expensive medication. And a situation like that does not qualify you for a special enrollment to go ahead and buy a drug plan mid-year. So to have one just in case, and basically buy the low premium one, so that at least it'll keep you out of a penalty. And those are the reasons to get it, in case you need it, and to avoid the penalty. <clears throat> so there are all kinds of private insurance policies that you can buy to supplement original medical care. You see the column on the left on the screen for original Medicare, but then there's supplements, there's advantage, advantage plans, there are cost plans, and standalone Part Ds. We'll get into the details of each of these a little bit. <clears throat> we'll start with Medicare Advantage plans. These are the ones that you see on television, and if you have your remote handy, you switch quick because you're tired of seeing it. Um, I do this a lot and I don't enjoy the commercials any more than you do. So what to know about Medicare Advantage? First of all, they're offered by private insurance companies who are paid by Medicare to assume the risk and the administration of caring for your healthcare costs. Medicare Advantage plans are far more common in large cities. There are none available in the Minot area or Northwest North Dakota during this year, 2021. If you lived in Fargo and Bismarck, you would have several to pick from. I can explain that in person if you want, but it gets a little complicated. Many of these Medicare Advantage plans have zero premium plans. They simply take what they get from CMS, the Center of Medicaid Serv Medicare Services, and they charge nothing in addition, but they provide all the services that you normally get under Medicare Part A and B, plus they usually throw in some extra things uh, like dental, vision, and hearing. You're eligible for it. They don't ask your age or your gender. Um, the only question they'll ask is if you have end-stage renal disease. In that case, there's another program for that, and you would enroll in that. You have to reside in the correct county, or area in order to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. The benefits on a Medicare Advantage plan can vary quite a bit. Comparing them is important, but the biggest point about a Medicare Advantage plan, when you, you think about having Medicare only, just original Medicare, there are maximum out-of-pocket limits. In other words, if you have a lot of expenses, once you hit that maximum out-of-pocket, then the insurance company has to pay the entire bill for the rest of the year, which is a real peace of mind for people um, rather than having no limit if you're only on Medicare. Medicare Advantage plans, you still are in the Medicare system with all the rights and protections that Medicare gives you. Um, you can choose a plan with drug coverage or without. And like I said earlier, um, most of these plans add extra benefits, vision, dental, fitness club, all those kind of things. And when you have a Medicare Advantage plan, you will get billing and you will wonder exactly what you owe. And I'll give you just a basic advice. On a Medicare bill, you'll see three or four columns with numbers. The, the amount that the provider is charging, the allowed amount, in other words, the amount that the clinic or doctor or hospital knows they're going to get paid, then the insurer responsibility, in other words, the portion of that amount that the insurance company is going to pay, and finally, your responsibility. The bottom line is this, when you get a medical bill, wait until all the charges and the insurance payments have been processed and documented on your bill. I call it the Medicare billing pinball machine. Let it kick it around for at least a month or two, perhaps even three, and then question whether it's correct. And then you can pay the bill. Another type of plan is a Medicare cost plan. And Medicare cost plans, again, they're offered by private insurance companies. The premiums vary by plan. And again, they're not based on your age or your gender. They work with Medicare A and B. No questions asked about your health, except that end-stage renal disease question. And again, they also provide 
extra benefits like eye exams, hearing exams, fitness club, etc. Again, they're only available in certain areas. There are lots of choices in the care you can get on a cost plan. Basically, if the doctor, clinic, hospital you go to is a Medicare provider, then the cost plan will cover you. I should go back to the uh, Medicare Advantage slide. Um, if you are in a Medicare Advantage plan, <clears throat> way back when they first came out, a lot of them were HMOs and you had to go to their doctors in order to get coverage. But today, the majority of Medicare Advantage plans are PPOs, in other words, preferred provider organizations. And in that case, you can go to doctors outside their contracted provider network. You'll pay a little higher copay, but sometimes it's worth it to go to the doctor you have great confidence in uh, that, that can treat you uh, better than the ones that are in network. So you have choices that way. All right, let's go on to Medicare Supplement, or often referred to as Medigap. These, again, are offered by private insurance companies. These do not get paid by Medicare. They simply stand alongside, and the trigger for them to make payment is if Medicare pays, they're required to pay. <clears throat> you pay a monthly premium for a Medicare Supplement plan, and you, depending on which Medicare Supplement plan you choose, some of them make you pay a deductible, make you pay some co-insurance, et cetera. It's really important to compare the cost and the coverage you get and choose between a Medigap plan, an Advantage plan, or a cost plan. You can only have one of these three types of plan. You can't have an Advantage plan on a supplement or a cost plan in a supplement. It's important to decide which one you want. And everybody's situation is a little bit different. And uh, comparing the premium costs and the co-pays, et cetera, it gets to be a little bit difficult. And choosing what your neighbor or your relative or your friend has may not be right for you unless your health situation and budget are identical. <clears throat> a Medicare supplement plan pay the 20% not covered by original Medicare. And Medicare supplement plans are standardized. The coverage in them are, is the same, no matter which company you purchase it from. For example, a Medicare plan F is the same no matter which carrier you purchase it from. And a G is the same. Medicare supplement plans, if you enroll in the first six months after your 65th birthday or eligibility for Medicare initial enrollment, you have six months to get a Medicare supplement plan without any questions asked about your health. But after that, they can ask questions and they can turn you down. There's been a lot of questions in recent years about the two most common Medicare supplement plans, the Plan F as in Frank, which is uh, the most comprehensive coverage you can get in a Medicare supplement plan. It's been discontinued. Um, it's available if you're enrolling for the first time and we're eligible on or after 1-1 of 2020. In other words, um, you cannot purchase that plan if you're aging into Medicare now, but people who are still working and were born before that, they can. Plan F is such good coverage that Medicare decided they just didn't want it available anymore because they wanted people to have to pay a little bit before they access care. The next closest plan that is still available and allowed to be purchased by people these days is Plan G. The only difference between Plan F and Plan G is the Part B deductible, which this year is only $203. But the difference in premium is often far more than $203. The G is quite a bit lower in premium. So it's important to compare the two if you're wanting to pick a supplement plan. Supplements have excellent coverage, very little out of pocket after paying the premium, but they do not include prescription drug coverage or any of those things like vision, dental, or hearing. Let's talk about Part D prescription drug plans. Uh, these are pretty basic, really. Um, the easiest way to determine which one is right for you is to go to medicare.gov, the web um, page that I have there in blue on the screen, and search for the plan that'll charge you the least overall cost in premium, deductible, and co-pays. And it's not the same for everyone. 
if you take the same prescriptions, you'll arrive at the same policy, but otherwise uh, it's, it's not easy to tell which one would be correct for you. You can have the state usually comes around and has um, help searching for the drug plan for the upcoming year and agents like myself could also help you. <clears throat> the drugs included on a plan's list vary from plan to plan. They may not all have this exact same list of medications, but each one is required to include a medication for every illness that there is, so that even if you enroll in the low premium stay out of penalty policy, it will have a medication on the formulary if you end up with an illness and you need a medication. <clears throat> Let's talk about formularies. Sometimes a person develops an illness mid-year and the prescription that is provided in the formulary on the plan you have is not exactly the one you and your doctor would like to use. And in that case, you can request what's called a formulary exception. Your doctor has to submit it saying you need it. And uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long to get approval and you can start getting the prescription you want for the rest of that year. And then next year, shop for the plan that actually includes it uh, as part of their plan. Prescription drug coverage plans have five different levels of cost. They're called tiers, not like tears you cry, but T-I-E-R-S. Um, the low cost generics and up to the high cost brand name specialty drugs. Every one of them has a large provider network of pharmacies. And so if you travel, you, know, you don't have any difficult accessing a pharmacy and getting the care you need. That's pretty much all there is to this presentation today. The most important thing I can say is if you're soon to turn 65, be sure you get yourself set up with uh, Medicare. Even if you choose to postpone Social Security, if you want Medicare, you'll have to ask them. And if you're going to be working past 65 and then are retiring later on, uh, again, you'll want to get that correct also. These slides are going to be available. You can access them and look at them as much as you want. And of course, if you have uh, more questions, you could call Social Security Administration. I have the national number there, but I also have the local number here in Minot, North Dakota. And the, the phone number and the fax number. I encourage you to work locally if you can. And of course, I'm happy to help you navigate that process as well if need be. So here are the contact number for me. If you have any further questions, just feel free to call. There's no obligation. There's no cost. We can look at your unique situation and find out the combination that's correct for you. Thank you.